Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. All right, New York. We are so honored to be here this evening. You are doing such magnificent work. And we are grateful that we are able to be a part of this. And we say congratulations to all the honorees. And congratulations to everybody that put this together. Because we say, come together, people who have no fear. Come together, people who want love, who want peace. Come ye. Come ye. Come ye. Come ye. Ye who would have peace. Hear me. What I say now. It's time to learn how to pray. Come ye, ye who have no fear of what tomorrow brings
where all humanity will raise their voices to say, let there be peace, let there be peace, let there be peace, oh, peace. Let there be peace on earth, let it begin with me. Oh, yeah. Let there be peace on earth, let it begin with me. So this is the part where y'all sing along with us, all right? It's a very simple, simple line and simple melody. Just listen to it and then repeat after us one time. Let there be peace on earth. Let it begin with me. Y'all sing that? Let there be peace on earth. Let it begin with me. Yeah, clap along and sing. Thank you all so very Thank much. You. Good night. Wow. Should we have another round of applause for Sweet Honey in the Rock? That was so beautiful. Thank you guys for being with us. It was amazing. Um, so I'm really excited to uh, present this evening's final honor to just an incredible human being um, and a fellow storyteller of the Innocence community, Innocence As Ambassador Namdi Asamoa. Now, Namdi is something of a contradiction. He is the quiet guy in the corner, albeit the tall and incredibly handsome quiet guy in the corner. Namdi tends not to call attention to himself, so you might not notice him when he first walks into a room, but then somebody will invariably b <clears throat> point out that he is a four-time NFL All-Pro cornerback who you might have seen jump six feet in the air and snatch a pass away from a guy who's twice his size, or you might have heard speak numerous times at the Clinton Global Initiative on things like youth activism and global service, or that he's a recipient of the President's Volunteer Service Award, or that he's been named Sports Illustrated Man of the Year, or that his Asamoah Foundation has helped thousands of Nigerian widows and orphans rise out of poverty, and hundreds of California's low-income students of color have access to elite colleges and universities. But, but you probably won't hear any of that from Namdi, because Namdi doesn't see his achievements as badges of honor, but rather as platforms from which to improve the lives of others. Namdi's personal accomplishments have always been inextricably intertwined with a call to public service. So when Namdi retired from the NFL a few years ago to pursue a full-time career as an actor and as a producer, his personal mandate didn't change. He scoured Hollywood for projects that both moved him personally and yet had the potential for social impact. Within a year, <laughs> of his retirement, he'd ex Wow, something is going on behind me. Okay, I can handle being upstaged. Um, I'm very used to it. I work with Kerry Washington. Oh, <clears throat> sorry, Kerry. Uh, <laughs> um, within a year of Nomdi's retirement, he had executive produced and uh, an extraordinary film 
uh, for Netflix about child soldiers in the Congo called Beasts of No Nation. And then, yeah, with Idris Elba, it was an incredible film. A year after that, he found a vehicle for himself as an actor that also had the potential to move the needle on criminal justice reform. That film is called Crown Heights. <laughs> Crown Heights is the true life saga of Colin Warner. Uh, Colin spent 21 years in prison for a murder he didn't commit. He finally gained his freedom thanks to the tireless efforts of his best friend, Carl King, whom Namdi plays in the film. For 21 years, Carl simply refused to stop fighting for his friend. And we are deeply honored that both Colin and Carl and their families are here with us tonight. And Carl and Colin, if you guys would stand up, we'd really appreciate it. So, so Crown Heights won last year, it won the coveted um, audience award at the Sundance Film Festival. And just a few months ago, Namdi was nominated himself for both Independent Spirit and NAACP Image Awards for his performance. Now this is basically his first time at bat, excuse the baseball reference. I mean, you know, Namdi's just getting started. In, in, in the other side of the business, and he's already, you know, creating profound change and impact in addition to doing just superb work. Um, so, for people that know Namdi, it should come as no surprise that he found his footing as an artist and a storyteller of conscience as surely as he did when he first stepped onto a football field. So. It is my deep privilege to present the award for freedom and justice to my friend and fellow Innocence Ambassador, Namdi Asmoa. That was way too long, Tony. Um, thank you, Tony. Thank you, the Innocence Project, for this honor. I'm, I'm humbled by it. Um, congratulations to the other honorees, and congratulations to the exonerees um, for inspiring us all. The journey for me started with the script and a five-minute documentary. Um, the five-minute documentary was about a, a young kid from Trinidad, who was in Brooklyn, who was wrongfully convicted of a murder, sentenced to life in prison, and it was about his friend, Carl King, who devoted his life to proving his innocence. That kid was Colin Warner. Um, after 21 years, Colin was freed, and that was with the help of Carl King and Antoinette Warner, who you guys acknowledged earlier, but I'd just like to acknowledge them again, because it was definitely tireless work. But, you know, back to that documentary, at the end of the documentary, Colin says, um, I'm not angry with anybody. Uh, you know, this was my burden to bear, and I just want to become strong from this and move on with, with my life. And those words changed my life, and that's when I started the journey. Um, I never really, I never really, wanted to meet my heroes growing up. I'll tell you why. I was at Disneyland once and I was a little kid and um, we had just finished eating and I, I turned around uh, the right corner and I saw Mickey and Goofy and Donald, but Donald didn't have his mask on. And uh, yeah, I know it's, it's funny, you know, but I looked and you know, it's a devastating thing for a kid to, to see that, you know, it's, 
I was crushed and I was like, they're not real. You know, my heroes aren't real. Um, and 28 years later, I was lucky enough to meet a real life hero and this one didn't wear a mask. Ladies and gentlemen, Colin Warner. Greetings, one and all. My name is Colin Warner. I am a product of New York State Institutional System. I was convicted at 18 years old, and I spent 21 years in jail after doing a 15-year-to-life sentence. I am here now to honor Namdi Asamoah, that's the right name, and all those who are coming out of prison now. My message to those who are, who are coming out is, is to stay strong. Families stay in their corner because we need help. We are like babies. I told one guy, listen, when we are becoming a, a nationhood, it's so much of us out there who basically are being kidnapped from the streets. And for some of us, we don't, we don't come out of jail. Giving a prison sentence is not saying that you're going to come out after you do the time. Right? So these brothers are, are real heroes, and we have to see that in them. I consider myself a warrior because I did not know I had that strength until I was 18, and my life was taken away from me. But I believe that we all have that power within us, and sometimes we just need somebody to tell us, or our backs are pushed against the wall, and we have to become out fighting. So I thank everybody for giving the effort in getting these people out of prison because there are many more inside. So again, my movie, Crown Heights, is for those who cannot be able to speak, who are still behind bars and praying that something the next day they will see freedom or the loved ones. Again, thank you, everybody, and I appreciate everybody for coming out. God bless. Thank you so much. Before we move on to the rest of the schedule uh, in your program, we have a special guest whose story many of you already know. Robert Williams, also known as Meek Mill, is a platinum-selling rapper and songwriter from Philadelphia. Last fall, he was sentenced to two to four years for a probation violation that stems from a conviction more than a decade ago that he maintains he didn't commit. The Philadelphia District Attorney has moved to reverse that conviction because one of the officers in the case, the original case, has a history of misconduct. Two weeks ago, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court ordered Meek's release on bail. His case has drawn new attention and new voices to calls for reform of the criminal justice system. We are honored and happy to have him here tonight to say a few words about his experience. Please welcome Meek Mill. Thank you. Uh, I would like to say I'm, I'm humbled to be here today with uh, this room of, uh, I would call it heroes, that's uh, contributing to being the voice for the voiceless people. A lot of men and women that's trapped behind the walls that don't have the voice and, and may not have the resources we have. Uh, my life was changed when I got sentenced to a, four, a two to four state prison sentence for a crime that I allegedly committed at the age of 18, I'm actually 31, I turned 31 on Sunday. And my life was changed from seeing 
the support I was getting from through the public. Uh, of course, I, we was able to watch TV and I seen a lot of people stand up for me and support me. And the moment I told myself, I told God, the moment that I got out of my situation and got back feet on the ground, I would participate in being a voice for the voiceless. Uh, I'm actually a hip hop artist first, and I got a lot of fans. They like when I came home from prison, like, when you gonna make new music? When you gonna do this with new music? I'm like, uh, I can make music any day. I, I wanted to spend some time to dedicate it to some of the men and women trapped behind the walls because I personally spent time with men and women uh, fighting for their freedom 26 years, 27 years. I wanna salute all the exonerees in here who fought for their freedom and we're strong enough mentally to still be able to stand here in front of us today and not be bitter and still commit to changing the world. And I just believe uh, God called me for a, a certain position to help change the world. I don't believe I'm the face for anything. I didn't sign up to be the face. I just believe my situation uh, as a public figure can bring, shed more light to situations that never had light shed on them. And I'm gonna continue to dedicate myself to uh, trying to change the justice system and, and fix the flawed justice system to help men like these men that's in here today come home to their families. I heard uh, the one gentleman before me say a lot of men was, he felt like they're kidnapped and took from the street. Actually, when I was took off the street uh, six months ago, I felt like I was kidnapped from my son, my family. Actually, I was on probation and uh, at one point in my life, I did have a drug addiction. I was using Percocets, and I never wanted to admit to my probation officer that I was using Percocets, because if you admit to using Percocets uh, before, they could give you medicine or they could send you to jail. Nine times out of 10, you get sent to prison. And that happened to be one of the biggest battles of my life. And in 2017, I was moved to a different county, a different probation administration where uh, I had an addiction, and. My probation officer asked me did I need help. I told her yes, I needed help. Uh, I went through rehabilitation. Uh, I stayed clean for almost a year straight and still was violated and, and my freedom was taken. And when I got to prison, the prison was filled with a lot of people that I felt in my heart was innocent, a lot of people that was there for drug addictions, mental health. And, uh, and with my platform, they gave me a chance to be on less the whole dateline CNN, um, I'm able to perform on musical stages in front of 50,000 people at one time. Uh, I'ma still remain to be a rapper, but I just believe that I could use my platform to shed light on the people who never had light shed on them. So I'm humbled to be here, and I would like to thank everybody that's a part of the Innocence Project. I've been a fan since about 2014, since I seen the page on uh, social media, and I wanna continue to help change the world for a better cause. Thank you. Now it is our pleasure to introduce to you the Innocence Project's clients who were exonerated and freed this year. I want to express my thanks to our co-councils and local partners that are an integral part of many of these victories, many of you here in this room. I am honored to make these introductions alongside Marvin Anderson, a member of the Innocence Project Board of Directors, liaison to our exoneree advisory group, chief of the Hanover Virginia Fire Department, and a former Innocence Project client, exonerated in 2001 after 20 years of wrongful conviction. Tonight we welcome the Innocence Project clients and those who wrongfully convicted along the side of them. We were free this year. It is my pleasure to share a video that lets them introduce themselves before we have welcomed them to our stage. When I originally got convicted, I was 19 years old and I got sentenced to 40 to 100 years in prison. I thought that I was going to die in prison and I'm so happy that I was wrong. I never stopped trying. 
back in 1996-97, the Anderson Project had my case. It was dismissed because of the fact that, say, all the evidence was destroyed. And from then, I never gave up hope. I kept pursuing, and thank God, the uh, hair sample turned up. I was releasedly sprung from prison by the Innocent Project. Over the course of many attempts to reach out to outside advocacy and having received indication that my word was being received with an open mind, I kind of lost faith. I was wrongfully convicted of murder, locked up for 22 years. After the DNA was tested, things definitely started looking a lot brighter. I lost a lot of family, mother, father, but you know, one day at a time it gets better. I just try to keep a healthy state of mind and I'm just so grateful. I'm thankful and I'm faithful about how the whole situation turned out. One day I saw a show called 48 Hours uh, Mystery and I saw that they could test DNA off one piece of hair and a hat. And that's when I started writing lawyers. After doing all that time, you know, you can really focus on what you need to focus on. Over my 23 years incarcerated, 24 years, I lost a lot. You know, I lost my mother, my father, a brother, a sister. It was horrible, but I survived because I told my mother on her deathbed that I was going to continue to fight this, and I promised I would not give up. But it was a long, hard-fought battle. Rather than just give up and not keep the faith, I have to have faith in myself. So I have to say, one day I will be free. And here I am. They didn't want me to study. One guy tells me, this is jail, not Yale. Criminal justice put me here illegally, and I'm not guilty. But they say I'm guilty. That don't make me guilty, does it? Society has not done anything wrong to me. It was the criminal justice system. See, I'm not bitter, I'm not angry, there's no vendetta, there's no animosity. My thing is just try to help where I can and to continue to live my life to the fullest. Freedom means the right to do and say what I wanted to do, and I was denied that freedom when I went to prison. I love just being free, not under somebody's control. It's a new life. It's like being rebound. It's like giving a chance to live a life I have been denied. Freedom means a lot to me, you know, at this point in time, because like I said before, like, you know, it, it, it was rough. It was rough, but, you know, we got over that hurdle, though. You know, we, I made it. It's so many things. I can't even wrap it up into one small answer like it's the tiny de details of every day it means i can go to the grocery store i can pay my bills i can drive a car i can take a bath like there's so many little things that are taken from you on a day-to-day -day basis being incarcerated but freedom as a whole to me means the ability to move on with my life without this black cloud hanging over my head Please join me in welcoming to the stage those Innocent Project clients that were free this year. Malcolm Alexander was wrongfully imprisoned for 38 years in Louisiana. Kevin Bailey was wrongfully imprisoned for 28 years in Illinois. He was wrongfully convicted alongside Corey Blatter, who is in Chicago tonight and could not be with, here with us. Mark Denny was wrongfully in prison for 30 years in New York. Keith Harding was wrongfully in prison for 22 years in Kentucky. He was wrongfully convicted and freed alongside Jeff Clark, who is here tonight. Jeff has also served 22 years and was represented by Kentucky Innocent Project and Exonery Project. Leroy Harris, wrongfully in prison for 28 years, Connecticut. Eric Kelly, 
was wrongfully in prison for 24 years in New Jersey. He was wrongfully convicted and freed alongside Ralph Lee, who is here tonight. Ralph also served 24 years and was represented by Sir Turinger. Blaise Lobato was wrongfully imprisoned for 16 years in Nevada. Alfred Swinton was wrongfully imprisoned for 19 years in Connecticut. Raymond Tempest was wrongfully imprisoned for 24 years in Rhode Island. There is one more introduction to make that you didn't see the person in the video. Actually, two. Gregory Counts, a client of the Innocence Project, and Van Dyke Perry, who was represented by the Office of the Appellate Defender, were wrongfully convicted of a crime that never actually happened. Van Dyke Perry served 10 years before being released on parole in 2011. Greg Counts served 26 years in prison and one year on parole. They were exonerated yesterday in Manhattan. We welcome them here and home today. The people on the stage with us served combined 311 years of wrongful incarceration. Please join me again in welcoming them home. Now it is my pleasure to ask the, all those innocent persons who were finally freed or still fighting who choose to join us on stage to come forward. Steve Barnes, 20 years, New York. Kareem Bellamy, 14 years, New York. Dewey Bazzelli, 26 years, New York. Matthew Brewer, 25 years, New Jersey. Hugh Burton, 20 years, New York. Angel Cadoyo, 13 years, New York. Jeff Desovitz, 16 years, New York. Anthony Petipido, 20 years, New York. Cornelius Dupree, 31 years, Texas. Jimmy Gardner, 26 years, West Virginia. Cy Green, 22 and a half years, New York. Byron Hensley, 22 years, New Jersey. Andre Hatchett, 25 years, New York. Johnny Ngapeti, 25 years, New York. Vernon Horn, 20 years, Connecticut. Dara Howard, 24 years, North Carolina. John Huffington, 
32 years, Marilyn. Marquise Jackson, 20 years, Connecticut. Noah Jackson, 11 years, Tennessee. Calvin Johnson, 16 years, Georgia. Lorenzo Johnson, 22 years, Pennsylvania. Clifford Jones, 30 years, New York. Scott Lewis, 20 years, Connecticut. Stefan Morant, 21 years, Connecticut. Michelle Murphy, 20 years, Oklahoma. Herbert Murray, 29 years, New York. Alan Newton, 21 years, New York. Peter Uko, 18 years, Kenya. Michelle Poulos, 16 years, California. Gerard Richardson, 20 years, New Jersey. Rodney Roberts, 18 years, New Jersey. Felipe Rodriguez, 26 years, New York. Carlos Sanchez, 25 years, New York. David Shepard, 11 and a half years, New Jersey. Daniel Tapia, 12 years, Louisiana. Everton Wagstaff, 23 years, New York. Colin Warner, 21 years, New York. Jabbar Washington, 21 years, New York. Betty Ann Waters, in memory of Kenny Waters, 18 years, Massachusetts. Corey Wise, 12 years, New York. Tony Wright, 25 years, Pennsylvania. And finally, Marvin Anderson, 20 years, Virginia. Thank you to our honorees and guests. Thank you for, to our honorees and guests for being here with us tonight and for being such an indispensable part of this movement. Please also join me to acknowledge and thank all the people on the team here at the Sheraton who worked hard to serve us this evening. Thank you for all your work tonight. And uh, to all of you in the audience, thank you. It's your support that makes this possible and will enable us to do much, much more in the future. Have a wonderful evening. Good night. <laughs>